Hey guys, what's going on? Uh, today I'm going to do like a little bike check, talking you through my new race bike for the 2020 season. Unfortunately, everything is cancelled right now, but maybe there's some racing later in the year. And I'm going to talk through all the components we have on the bike, and as well as some, some setups and tips and thoughts about it. So yeah. This is, by the way, the sound check to line up the microphone through the audio and video. So, I would say we start with the frame. It's like a Specialized Enduro, the new 2020 version, in an S4 sizing, which is kind of an L, XL thing. The reach is about 490. It's not too long and too slack. I just prefer, like, a good conservative middle way like I'm around about 190 and I don't need anything like above 500 or anything like that so yeah it's just a perfect match with a good sizing um, yeah everything else from the bike is not standard so we change pretty much every part about the bike let's start with we start from the back so we have like DD Swiss wheels and hops. The, on the back wheel we have the EX511 rim on a 350 hub, which is like the strongest wheel DD Swiss is offering. Um, in my eyes, like wheels are the most important part about a bike. Um, this is probably one of the things that breaks super early, so you have to make sure the wheels are strong and reliable. Um, wheels proudly presented by Maxxis. We have like a Dissector, which is a new Troy Brosnan signature tire on the back. It's 29 inch front and rear and the rear tire is 2.4 with a Max Grip DH casing. No inserts, not in the back, not in the front. Um, I've never flatted in a race or not even in training like I do like once a flat tire a year so there is no need for me to run inserts. Yeah, tubeless of course. Um, I think anything else is stupid running like mountain bikes wise these days. Then the gearing is the new Shimano XT drivetrain 12 speed. And we have a 30 um, tooth sprocket in the front, which is like, a small one because I like to spin my legs and stuff even on like like especially on long liaisons or anything like that I just want to make sure to have like a high cadence make sure the legs are spinning and I've read in an interview that Sam Hill is running 30 by 50 on a 650b which is like even less so I don't care if Sam Hill does it why not myself yeah so here is some sponsored decals. It's like a um, protection frame with the logos in it, which is pretty sick. I run them for almost three years now. Looks sick, looks awesome. Um, cranks are 170 cranks. Um, it's like the only issue you have with these modern bikes. Like the bottom bracket is that low that you hit the ground with the end of the paddle or of the crank, which is pretty, pretty scary if that happens to you ever. So yeah, making sure short cranks to don't hit any rocks or anything like that. Paddles as well from Shimano. It's the XTR version. Reason for that is they are like more durable and they're like a couple of grams lighter, which is like, it's not much, but you have like 100 grams here, 100 grams here. And it, I mean, it's still like a race bike, so weight is not very important, but it's still noticeable. That's also the reason we're gonna jump to the front, why we're running like a smaller, lighter version of a wheel in the front. It's also DD Swiss, a 350 hub, but with a XM4A1 rim, which is a little bit lighter than the back one. So yeah, it's like rotational weight is super important and you definitely feel the difference. 
on front right now there is a mini and dhf 2.5 in double down casing also max grip which is like one of my favorite tires um i'm always running the dissector on the back like even in the wet or hot pack it's like the best back tire in the front i'm changing between most of the time between the dhf and the essay guy just because like i think dhf is rolling a little bit faster and as a guy has a little bit more grip and braking traction and stuff yeah let's move on to suspension really important part as well on the bike suspension is provided by fox 2020 products um, it's an x2 air shock in the rear the 36 in the front and a transfer with the longest travel they offer 170 um, like i have long legs i need all the spacing between the frame and the saddle so i just want to make sure i got the saddle down as far as possible and can move my body around and stuff yeah let's say suspension is like the most awkward important most noticeable part about the bike where you can do the most of the changes and stuff so let's talk about setup i think setup is something it's super unique everybody has to figure out their own setup there is a recommendation from fox for the fork and the damper they are pretty good out of the box so if you're completely new take the settings they advance to you use them start kind of in the middle and move like click by click away from there um, on that bike it's like 170 travel front and rear which is like pretty big but definitely the rear end is like super noticeable sensitive and still very well for paddling so it more it, it feels like most of the time you're riding like 140 or 150 but as soon as like your rear end is moving around like big bumps and stuff you you feel like there's 170 in the back so it's super nice for indoor riding you can do a lot of sprints like the anti-squat on the bike is really good most of the time i don't even uh, change into climb mode just on long fire roads or anything like that because the shock and the whole frame isn't moving very much so pressure wise um right now we're running 78 psi in the front with one token and 235 psi with all tokens in the shock um, it's a pretty harsh setup and that means like the front is hard the shock is hard i prefer like hard and stiff setups um, the clicks is like all in the mid-range nothing really serious like a little bit on the faster side and a little bit softer so compression more open high speed compression is all the way open in the fork because like i want to have my fork moving consistent through the travel um yeah that's pretty much it like i mean like you can copy all the setup tips from pros and stuff but you have to figure your own setup out so just make sure you give it a day or two in a bike park do some back-to-back -back laps and change settings and stuff so yeah what's really cool on the bike is like all this SWAT stuff so we have the integrated frame box we have SWAT tool up here i mean like that that thing is like best on best on earth like you can put in there uh spare tubes spare parts tools whatever like bars jacket it's it's like so good you don't even need any hip bag or backpack or whatever so you put all this stuff in there it's super quiet there's no rattling or anything super good invention like i love that it's pretty much the best thing about the new bike <laughs> um yeah let's move to the cockpit it's provided by choice they get this 35 um, bar and stem of course we have 35 millimeter stem um the bar is a carbon one with a degree back sweep and i'm only running 760 millimeters of um bars which is pretty narrow but i tried it um 
it's way easier to navigate through trees and put the bike in corners down. Like I can, the best thing is like, if you try push-ups and as far you move the hands out, you have to put more pressure to move the body. It's the same as with the bike. So you try to bring the hands in to save some energy while pushing and stuff. So yeah, there are a lot of benefits of riding smaller bars and I don't feel there is any need for like 800 and stuff. So yeah, as well, super specific. I think there is like a modern trend for wider bars, but no need for me there. But as always, it's personal preference. What do you need? One thing I really love about the bike is the Magura brakes. It's an MT7 provided by Magura with a 203 millimeter disc front and rear. And they have their new discs, um, they're called DMR discs, which are like floating discs, same as you have like on a motocross or dirt bike or anything like that, which is like unreal. Like the performance upgrade just with the disc is like pfft, superb. Um, and there is like a cool effect after a long descent, you can hear the, the brakes or you can hear them like flistering and stuff. It's super cool and yeah, like I've been with that exact bike like two weeks in Finale Ligure and eight weeks in New Zealand. And there is like n perfect bike for everything. Like you can do big pedal lays, you can do bike park sendings, big jump lines. So it's like, if you need one bike for everything, it's pretty much the perfect match. Of course, you have to pedal a little bit more than on a trail bike or average normal enduro, but you can take all the big hits, go for the double black diamond lines as well, like super fast stuff. This is where the bike is really unreal. Like as faster you go, as more you can feel like the back end of the bike working and it's like unreal. Hands down the best bike I've ridden so far. Yeah, grips are DMR death grips. I like them. They're kind of motocross stuff, like with the little ring here. So, and yeah, they're like super soft and I'm running through like a couple of them throughout the year, but I just like a good grip. Like, especially contact points on a bike is like really important. So you have grips, paddles and seed, which is like so personal. Um, always make sure to try different stuff, especially like paddles is Mysterium, I would say and um, yeah right now with the Shimano. I'm super happy. They're like strong I run them all the way on the strongest side. So it's super cool um, Seed is provided by specialized as well. It's like a special seed for it's pretty soft Like I don't really talk about seeds like you have to figure out your own I have a small ass, so small saddle, it's soft, like, it's brilliant, yeah. Anything else, like, what is unique about the bike, I would say, definitely we have some super nice individual custom brake covers from Magura, with my name on it, with the team logo on it. Yeah, and like the whole setup is like kind of a factory setup, so it's suspension, brakes, wheels, the gearings and stuff is like super cool. On the Maguras, I'm running, running the Lewick Bruni levers. They're like unreal. Also, like I'm coming from dirt bikes and I like like far out, like almost flat. So yeah, they're perfect. Yeah, I would say that's it. Thanks for joining me. Um, if you have any thoughts, let me know. Put down a comment or just get in contact with me. Yeah, thank you so much for Team Hero Bikes for that unreal setup and let's hope we have some racing this year. See ya. Cheers.